Welcome back everyone to part 9 of our series on making a platforming game in Unity. I'm Mike Page with scriptingisfun.com and in this video we're going to be looking at how to damage our enemies. So if when we shoot them with the laser beam from the last video we want them to take damage and if they take enough damage we want to remove them from the game. We're also going to look at how to damage the player. So when the player touches one of the enemies we want to also cause him some damage and if he runs out of health we're going to remove him from the game as well. So let's jump right into Unity and get started. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that our laser can collide with things. So let's go to our prefab folder and to our laser prefab and we can see there isn't any kind of a collider on here. So let's add a component. It's under Physics 2D. And let's go ahead and get a Circle Collider 2D. And let's drag one of these out in the scene so we can see it, so we can size this collider. So the collider right now is um, a little big. So let's just kind of edit that and slide it down in. And we'll just kind of make it a little bit smaller here. Um, we can drag like this as well. There we go. Something about like a 0 .05 looks pretty good. All right, so let's check our enemy out here and make sure he's ready for collision as well. And remember, the enemy has several objects that he's uh, underneath here. So let's go to the enemy himself. And he has a rigid body and he has a collider. So he's all set up for collision. Back on our laser then, the only thing we forgot to do is let's go ahead and mark this uh, as a trigger so that we don't have a physical um, push from when he hits it, but we can trigger that he was hit using a trigger collider. So our laser prefab now has a circle collider. We've sized it appropriately and we've checked it as is trigger. All right, so now what we need to do in the enemy script is when a laser hits him, we want it to do damage to him. So we can go to our enemy script in our scripts folder. And out here in Visual Studio, we can um, go in and look to see what's happening. So if you remember from other collision type things, what we need to do is add a function that will detect collisions with trigger collider objects. So let's make a new function down here at the bottom. We'll just make this a void function, and this is on trigger enter 2D. And that needs a collider variable and um, a auto completed collision here, but I usually like to call this other because this is the other object in the collision. So we've got our void, and I don't think we need the word private here, and I kind of auto completed this for me. Let's try that. So on trigger enter 2D, automatic uh, built-in function uh, that Unity has that will automatically run whenever this object touches another object with a trigger collider. All right, so next thing we need to do is we need to differentiate between different objects because we may have different objects in here with trigger colliders eventually. So let's go back in the Unity here and let's click on our prefab laser here and let's give him a tag. So right now he's untagged, so let's drop that down. We'll go ahead and add a tag with the plus sign here to add that in there. We'll just call this laser, and we'll save it. And then we have to go back to our prefab, and we have to select it from the list. It'll be in the list now, so there is our laser. So our laser now has the tag laser. And I think I forgot to apply a change here. Yeah, you notice how I didn't apply the change to the, pre the prefab here. All this is still bolded. So let's go ahead and just hit apply on this so that it changes our size of our collider back to the prefab. And let's get rid of this one out here in the scene. So now our prefab has that 0 0.05 radius on its collider. It's a trigger and it's got the laser tag. Now back to our enemy script here. Now we can check to see if this other thing that just hit us is a laser. So we just say if other dot compare tag and then we got to give it the tag we're looking for it's a laser have to type it exactly as you spelled it in the tag manager 
and then uh, right here we can take action so if it's the laser we want it to do something to our enemy so at this point why don't we make these enemies take possibly more than one hit to kill uh, this is really kind of up to whatever your design uh, ideas are but I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy a public integer and we're gonna call this health and we can set that in the inspector so this is his health once it hits zero we want him to die so now what we can do is we can actually damage him um, when we hit him so we're gonna keep this simple for now we're just going to have these lasers just do a flat amount of damage that will just code in here um, but if you wanted to get fancier and have different weapons do different amounts of damage, you could add a property to your laser uh, or your weapon that would tell how much damage it should do that we could pull here. But for now, let's just have it do some damage. So if we hit a laser, let's take our health, and this is minus equal 5, let's say. So every time we get shot, we're going to lose 5 health points from our laser. Then what we're going to want to do is check to see if we're still alive. So if health is less than or equal to zero, then we are out of health points and we should die. So um, let's just do a destroy command in here for now. Destroy, and we can just say game object because this is the script that's attached to the enemy, so that will make him... Um, go away and just destroy him from the game when he runs out of health. So we'll go ahead and save this that we have so far. Let's go back out to Unity. Let's go to our red enemy prefab here and let's go on down to his uh, the actual red enemy that's inside of there and let's go into the script here now and we see that there's health here now so let's go ahead and set our health to uh, 10 so that would take two hits with the laser for him to die and if I go up here to the enemy now you'll notice he's got a health of 10 um, and let's see what's this other red enemy here and he also has a health of 10 so uh, let's just see if they're still moving correctly now so we're gonna play and yep they're up there moving back and forth uh, and they're just kind of walking around. So let's see which this is the one that's closest to me right here. So let's watch him and let's see if his health goes down if I run over here and shoot him. So I'm going to run a little closer. I'm going to see if I can move that camera over a bit. Okay, I'm going to jump up here now and I'm going to try to shoot him. Okay. So it looks like we went right, th oh no, we did, we hit him. His health dropped to five. Now I noticed that the bullet did not stop. The bullet kept going right through him. Let's go ahead and shoot him again, make sure our death thing works. And there we go. And now he was destroyed out of the scene here. Okay, so what we want to do, and you notice also his patrol point stayed in here. He went away. We could actually destroy the whole parent object of the red uh, enemy here um, but for now I think we can just leave it uh, like it is but let's go make sure our bullets are disappearing when we hit him so the other thing we want to do is if it's a laser and we hit our enemy uh, not only do do we uh, want to take health away but we actually want to go ahead and destroy that bullet so let's do that right up here at the top so we're going to destroy destroy the laser because it has done its job. So again, we can use our destroy command. And this time we're going to do other dot game object because the other object in the collision is the laser. And that's getting captured right here through this collider 2D variable. So we can just destroy it like that. So that'll destroy the laser. Then we'll take away health points. And then we're going to check for dead and take care of that right there. So that would wipe them out after two hits. So let's save all that. We'll go back out here and just check it again. So let's go click in on that red enemy there. 
And let's go play, and we'll run over and see if we can shoot him. So there he is. And now the you see how the laser disappeared? And if we scroll down here a bit, we can see he's now at 5 health points. And if we jump up there and shoot him again, now he's dead. And we can jump up here. And there's another one up here. Let's jump up so we can see him. All right, let's see if we can shoot him too. And he took one hit and two hits, and that wiped him out. So now we have the ability to damage and kill our enemies. Okay, so since we're doing health and damage, let's also give the enemies the ability to damage the player. So for now, with the red enemies, we're going to make these a touch enemy. So if we touch them, they do some damage to us. So let's take a look at the objects that are going to be involved in this collision. It will be the red enemy, and he already has a rigid body, and he's got a capsule collider on him that is not a trigger because he needs that to keep from falling through the ground. And if we go to the player, he also has a rigid body and a capsule collider that is not a trigger. So we could look at how to do collisions with non-trigger uh, items here as well. So when the player gets collided into by one of these red alien dudes, let's have them do some damage to him. So let's just take a look at how we might do that. So we're going to go to our player script here. And let's give him some health now. So we'll just add a public uh, int for health to the player. And then we'll make a special function in his script. So I'm going down to the bottom here. And let's just make a void. And we're going to call this on collision enter 2D. And this needs a collision variable. They gave me a collision uh, variable name. That's fine. I don't really want it to be private. I guess it doesn't matter. But we'll just make that void so it matches up our other ones. So this function will fire off automatically if the object the script's attached to our player touches something else with a non-trigger collider. Now again, we're going to have to be careful because when we are touching the ground, we are touching a non-trigger collider. So we're going to have to have a tag that we can check on our object here so that we know if we have hit it. So let's go um, out to Unity here and let's go to our red enemy prefab. So I want the actual enemy graphic, not the parent object that's empty, but the graphic here where it's got the rigid body and the capsule collider. And let's tag this as an enemy. So we will add a tag here. Hit plus to add another one. Let's give him the enemy tag. And then let's go back to our enemy and select the tag from the list. So now he is tagged as enemy. Now in our script, we can do a compare tag again. We can say if collision dot. Now if I try to type in compare tag here, you notice how it doesn't uh, recognize it. That's because a collision variable type does not have a, um, a tag property. So we have to get that from this collision. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if collision dot game object. So that gives us access to the game object of this thing that we hit that has a collider on it, that has the collision on it. And then from here we can say compare tag. So sometimes you just have to know uh, what you can get the compare tag command from. We can get it from the game object of the collision data that we get. And then we can check to see if this is enemy. So now we're saying, hey, if the player has collided with an enemy, it's not a trigger collision. These are non-pass-through colliders that we're using. So if that happens, and it happens to be tagged as an enemy, then we can damage the player. So for now, let's just say health minus equals. And we'll just say the enemy hits us for 5 as well, because fair is fair. And we're doing 5 to him. So then let's check for, for death here. 
and so then it's just checking if our health is above zero so if health is less than or equal to zero then we're dead and um, what we'll do for now we don't want to really destroy our player out of the game here um, but what we can do is we can make him kind of disappear uh, at least temporarily so let's just do that so what we're going to do is we're going to go to game object dot set active faults what this will do is this will go to the game object of the game object that the script's attached to so that would be the player so the player's game object and we're going to deactivate him which will disable him and all his scripts and all that so he'll just disappear and it'll be like he's not in the scene even though he still is so we will just kind of take him out like that and then we'll save this so let's go set this up in unity and see if we can be damaged now by an enemy first thing we want to do is go to our player go to his script find that health variable I just dropped in and let's give him maybe 25 health so he can take five hits right now from an enemy before he's going to die and then let's play it and see if we lose health when we run into him all right let's run up here and let's jump up next let's let him hit us and you see how he pushed us and when he gave us that first hit we lost five health he comes back and hits us again now we're at 15 I mean if I run into him he's gonna push me and I'm just losing five right now so um, we can decide if that's what we really want to have happen or not now we're at five health if he hits me one more time we should there we go we're at zero health and my player has now disappeared you notice he's still up here in the hierarchy though he's still right here taking up space but he's been disabled and uh, basically this little checkbox up at the top here so if I check it back see how he's back and if I uncheck it he goes away so that's what we did we just basically turned him off and the benefit of that is that if anything depends on him in our game to communicate with they can still he's still there so we won't throw an error and then if we want to reset or respawn then we can just jump him back somewhere else for respawning um, and then he will be ready to keep playing because maybe we're going to restart the level when this happens or set him back to a checkpoint or whatever we want to do here. All right, so there we go. Uh, we managed to add in uh, all the parts we needed to do damage to the player and to the enemy. We looked at kind of a new way of doing collision detection with the on collision enter 2D function instead of the on trigger enter 2D function. And there's lots of different ways we could handle damage. Uh, in the game but this is one that yeah, shows some variety and uh, obviously there's many ways to do things in programming depending on the overall design of your game so thanks again for watching i hope you're finding this useful and understandable if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below i'm happy to answer those and have yourself a great day